In the heart of the Pacific Northwest lies a sprawling wilderness known for its breathtaking beauty and eerie secrets. This is where park rangers tread cautiously, armed not just with maps and radios, but with stories of things that go bump in the night. One such ranger, named Tom, would soon find himself at the center of one of the most chilling experiences of his career. Tom had been a park ranger for over a decade, working the remote trails of Pine Ridge National Park. Known for his rugged demeanor and unshakable calm, he had weathered everything from storms to lost hikers. However, he couldn't shake the unsettling tales whispered among the older rangers. Stories of cryptids, mysterious creatures that lurked just out of sight, said to haunt the deep woods. One fateful October night, Tom was assigned to patrol the most secluded part of the park, a rugged area known as Shadow Hollow. The locals spoke of strange sightings, towering figures with glowing eyes, disembodied whispers carried on the wind, and the chilling cries of creatures that were never seen. As he ventured deeper into the woods, Tom felt a sense of foreboding that he hadn't experienced in years. The moon hung low, casting an otherworldly glow on the forest floor where leaves crunched underfoot. As he navigated through the narrow trails, he caught sight of something unusual, a faint flickering light in the distance. Thinking it could be a camper who had strayed off the main path, he decided to investigate. As Tom approached the light, it grew brighter, illuminating a clearing where an old weathered cabin stood. It looked abandoned, yet there was something alive about it, as if it were watching him. The light seemed to pulse, drawing him in with an almost magnetic force. Against his better judgment, he stepped closer, the hairs on the back of his neck prickling with unease. Suddenly, the light vanished. Darkness enveloped the clearing, and Tom's heart raced. He was about to turn back when he heard it, a low, guttural growl emanating from the shadows. The sound sent a chill down his spine, and he instinctively reached for his flashlight, the beam slicing through the darkness. What he saw next made his blood run cold. A massive figure stood at the edge of the trees, its eyes glowing like hot coals. It was taller than any man and covered in matted fur, with elongated limbs and a monstrous face that twisted in the shadows. Tom's mind raced. Was this a bear? A man? Or something worse? His instincts kicked in. He backpedaled, keeping the beam of light trained on the creature, but it was moving closer. Tom's training as a ranger kicked in, urging him to stay calm, but terror clawed at his chest. He turned and sprinted back down the trail, the sound of heavy footsteps pounding behind him. Panic surged through him as he raced past trees and underbrush, branches clawing at his uniform like skeletal fingers. He could hear the creature's growls echoing through the forest, a bone-chilling symphony that made him run faster. He stumbled through the dark, disoriented, but his resolve remained unbroken. He had to reach his truck and call for help. Just as he broke through the tree line, a flash of light blinded him. It was his flashlight flickering weakly, the batteries dying. In a panic, he dropped it and dove into the safety of his truck, slamming the door shut. Heart pounding, he fumbled for the radio to call for backup, but the, the static crackled ominously, and all he could hear was the rhythmic pounding of something approaching. As he sat there in the silence, dread enveloped him. He could feel the creature just outside, its presence palpable. Moments felt like hours, and he gripped the steering wheel tightly, waiting for whatever would come next. Suddenly, a loud thud against the side of the truck jolted him. He dared to look out the window, and there it was. Its monstrous face pressed against the glass, eyes filled with an unearthly hunger. The growl became a snarl, and Tom felt the truck shake as it thrashed against it. With adrenaline surging, he turned the key and roared the engine to life. The creature let out a deafening roar that echoed through the night. And as Tom slammed the gear into drive, he felt the impact of its weight one last time before breaking free. He sped down the winding road, not daring to look back, his mind racing with disbelief. Had he really seen that? Was it just a trick of the light? But deep down, he knew he had encountered something beyond comprehension, something that dwelled in the darkest corners of the forest. Back at the ranger station, Tom reported the incident. But when the senior rangers listened to his account, they exchanged knowing glances. They'd heard it all before, the tales of the Shadow Beast, a cryptid that had haunted these woods for centuries. It was a creature of legend, rarely seen but always felt, a predator that thrived on fear. As the days passed, Tom tried to shake the experience from his mind, 
But the woods felt different now, every rustle of leaves and snap of twigs heightening his anxiety. The rangers began to share stories, recounting other sightings of strange figures and odd occurrences. Lost hikers who swore they were followed, chilling whispers in the night, and lights that flickered just beyond the trees. One night, as Tom lay in bed, he was jolted awake by a chilling howl that echoed through the forest. It was a sound he recognized all too well, the sound of the shadow beast. Fear gripped him as he realized it wasn't just a story, it was real, lurking, waiting, and it was hungry. As the days turned into weeks, reports of missing campers began to flood in. The park was put on high alert, but the beast was elusive, evading all attempts to locate it. Tom couldn't shake the feeling that the creature had targeted him, as if their encounter had marked him in some way. Months later, after another incident where a group of hikers disappeared without a trace, Tom decided to return to Shadow Hollow. Armed with a flashlight and a fierce determination, he ventured into the woods one last time, hoping to confront the creature that had haunted him for so long. As he stood in the clearing, he felt the weight of the silence pressing down. The shadows shifted, and then he heard it, the growl, deep and resonant. He turned, heart pounding, and the beast emerged from the darkness, more terrifying than before, a nightmarish vision of fangs and claws. In that moment, Tom understood the truth. Some legends are rooted in reality, and some creatures were never meant to be confronted. As the shadows closed in, he realized he had become a part of the stories he once dismissed, a tale whispered among rangers and campers alike. In the days that followed, Tom's name faded from the records. The rangers continued to patrol, but the stories of the shadow beast grew darker, a warning echoing through the trees for those brave enough to tread too deep into the woods. Story number two. In the heart of the dense, ancient forests of Montana, a park ranger named Jake had a job he loved. For five years, he patrolled the vast expanse of the national park, ensuring the safety of visitors and protecting the pristine wilderness. He knew every trail, every hidden glade, and every ominous rustle in the underbrush. But there was one path Jake avoided, the old logging road that twisted into the deep woods, a place steeped in local folklore and whispered legends of cryptids that haunted the shadows. One cool autumn evening, as the sun dipped behind the mountains and the air turned crisp, Jake received a radio call from headquarters. A family of campers had gone missing and a search party was being assembled. Jake, feeling the weight of responsibility, volunteered to lead the search. He donned his uniform, grabbed his flashlight, and headed towards the logging road, his heart pounding with a mix of fear and determination. As Jake ventured deeper into the woods, the sunlight faded, leaving only a ghostly glow filtering through the trees. The chirping of crickets and rustling of leaves created an eerie symphony, as if the forest was alive, watching him. He called out the names of the missing campers, his voice echoing through the trees, but only silence answered back. Hours passed, and just as Jake was about to turn back, he stumbled upon an old, abandoned cabin. The wooden structure looked as if it had been swallowed by the forest, vines creeping up the walls and moss covering the roof. Intrigued, he approached the cabin, flashlight in hand. The door creaked open, revealing a dark, dusty interior. A chill ran down his spine. Inside, Jake found old photographs of the cabin's last occupants, families smiling, children playing, and a couple who looked far too happy for the grim setting. As he examined the pictures, he felt a cold breeze rush past him, whispering words he couldn't understand. Shaking off the feeling, he turned to leave, but something caught his eye. On the floor, partially hidden under a rotting rug, was a trapdoor. With a mix of dread and curiosity, Jake pried it open. Below was a dark cellar, the air thick with the smell of decay. He descended carefully, the beam of his flashlight revealing old tools, remnants of long-forgotten lives, and something that made his heart race. A large, clawed footprint in the dirt. It was too big to belong to any animal he knew. Suddenly, a rustling noise echoed from the shadows, followed by a low growl that sent chills down Jake's spine. His instincts screamed at him to run, but he was frozen, rooted to the spot. The growl grew louder, more menacing, and Jake slowly turned to face the source of the sound. Emerging from the darkness was a creature unlike anything he had ever seen. It stood nearly seven feet tall, with matted fur that seemed to shimmer in the faint light. Its eyes glowed a deep amber, filled with a primal intelligence that chilled him to the bone. The creature's elongated limbs ended in sharp claws, 
and its jaw opened wide, revealing rows of teeth that looked capable of tearing flesh. Jake stumbled back, heart racing as he realized the stories were true. The legends of the Wendigo, a malevolent spirit said to haunt these woods, had come to life before his eyes. It was said to prey on those who ventured too deep, feeding on their fear and despair. Panic surged through him and instinct kicked in. He bolted up the stairs, slamming the trapdoor shut behind him. He ran through the woods, branches scratching at his skin, the growl of the Wendigo echoing behind him. Desperate to escape, Jake pushed himself harder, adrenaline fueling his every step. But the forest was relentless. The shadows twisted and turned, disorienting him, making him second-guess every direction. Just when he thought he'd lost the creature, Jake heard the unmistakable sound of footsteps behind him, growing closer and closer. He glanced back, and to his horror, the Wendigo was gaining on him, moving with an unnatural speed. In that moment, he saw something that sent his heart plummeting into his stomach, a flicker of movement in the trees, a glimpse of the missing campers. They were standing there, lifeless, their eyes wide and empty, as if the forest had claimed their souls. The sight was so haunting that Jake almost stumbled again. He turned back, focused on the path ahead, knowing he had to get out before it was too late. Finally, he burst into a clearing, the moonlight illuminating the area. He spotted his truck parked at the edge of the forest, hope igniting within him. With every ounce of strength he had left, Jake sprinted towards it, heart pounding in his ears. As he reached the vehicle, he fumbled with his keys, nearly dropping them in his frantic state. Just as he unlocked the door, he felt a cold breath on his neck, the Wendigo's presence overwhelming him. He swung the door open and jumped inside, slamming it shut. Jake started the engine, the roar of the vehicle drowning out the creature's growl. He peeled away, the headlights slicing through the darkness of the woods. As he drove, Jake's heart raced, but he couldn't shake the feeling that the forest was still alive behind him, watching him leave. The shadows closed in and the tales of the Wendigo echoed in his mind, a chilling reminder of the darkness that lurked just beyond the light. Weeks passed after that night, but Jake was never the same. The missing campers were never found, and he was haunted by nightmares of their lifeless eyes and the Wendigo's chilling growl. Every time he patrolled the park, he felt its presence lurking in the shadows, a reminder of the forest's dark secrets. Now. Jake stands watch over the park, forever vigilant. He tells his story to anyone who will listen, warning them of the old logging road and the creatures that dwell in the depths of the woods. But some still venture in, drawn by the thrill of the unknown, unaware that the forest holds secrets far more terrifying than they could ever imagine. And in the quiet of the night, if you listen closely, you might just hear the whispers of the lost souls, echoing through the trees, as the Wendigo waits, ever hungry, for the next unsuspecting traveler to claim. Story number three. In the heart of the Pacific Northwest, where the trees loom tall and the air is thick with the scent of pine and earth, lies a national park renowned for its breathtaking beauty. But beneath that beauty lurks an unsettling darkness. For years, park rangers have shared chilling tales of their encounters with cryptids and the spirits of those who vanished into the depths of the woods. It was autumn and the leaves were beginning to change, painting the forest in hues of amber and crimson. Ranger Ethan was new to the park, having recently transferred from a different location. Eager to prove himself, he volunteered for the night shift, a decision that would haunt him forever. On his first night patrolling the trails, the wind howled like a mournful ghost and the trees swayed ominously. He drove his truck along the winding dirt roads, the headlights cutting through the darkness. The dense forest felt alive, whispering secrets that danced just out of reach. As he checked in with the park headquarters over the radio, his supervisor, a grizzled veteran named Hank, warned him, stay close to your vehicle and don't stray too far from the main trails. There's talk of something strange out here. Ethan dismissed Hank's words as mere superstition, a remnant of folklore. He was determined to make his mark, so he pushed deeper into the woods. The serenity around him began to feel suffocating, as if the shadows were watching him. The first encounter. As the night wore on, a chilling fog rolled in, enveloping the trees like a shroud. Ethan felt a sudden drop in temperature and a sense of unease washed over him. He parked near an old trailhead that led to a clearing rumored to be a sacred site for the indigenous people who once inhabited the land, 
The air was thick with anticipation as Ethan stepped out, flashlight in hand. The beam illuminated the twisted branches overhead, casting eerie shadows that danced along the ground. As he ventured deeper into the woods, he heard a rustling sound nearby. Heart racing, he turned towards the noise, but only darkness stared back at him. Dismissing it as a deer or a raccoon, he pressed on, feeling a compulsion to explore. Suddenly, a blood-curdling scream shattered the silence. It was unlike anything he had ever heard, a mixture of anguish and terror that echoed through the trees. He froze, instincts screaming at him to turn back. But curiosity clawed at him, and he moved toward the sound. As he approached a small clearing, the moon broke through the clouds, illuminating a sight that froze him in place. In the center stood a figure, a woman dressed in tattered white garments, her hair wild and matted. She was staring intently into the darkness, her eyes wide with fear. Help me, she cried, her voice filled with desperation. He's coming! Ethan's heart pounded as he stepped forward, but before he could reach her, she vanished into thin air. He blinked, bewildered, convinced he had imagined it. The forest seemed to sigh, the whispering wind carrying her cry away. Legends of the Woods Returning to his truck, Ethan's mind raced with questions. Who was the woman? What had she seen? He remembered Hank's warning about the park's dark past, tales of hikers who vanished without a trace, swallowed by the forest. The local legend spoke of a malevolent entity that roamed the woods, a cryptid known as the Wraith. It was said to lure unsuspecting souls deeper into the forest, feeding off their fear and despair. Determined to uncover the truth, Ethan decided to research the legends. He spent the next few days in the park's archives, digging through old records and speaking to longtime rangers. The more he learned, the more he realized how deeply rooted the fear was. Stories of strange lights, inexplicable sounds, and shadows that moved against the grain of reality echoed in his mind. One evening, an elderly ranger named Mary approached him, her face lined with concern. Ethan, she said, her voice a whisper, there are things in these woods that are better left undisturbed. If you encounter the wraith, don't look it in the eyes. It thrives on fear, and once it knows your fear, it won't let you go. The Final Encounter Despite the warnings, Ethan felt an insatiable pull toward the woods. On his last night shift, he decided to return to the clearing where he had seen the woman. He parked his truck and ventured back into the dark embrace of the forest, armed with only his flashlight and a sense of determination. As he reached the clearing, a heavy fog settled around him, thickening with every breath. The air was electric, charged with an otherworldly energy. He felt the familiar chill creep into his bones, and his instincts screamed for him to turn back. But as he stood in the clearing, he heard a low growl reverberating through the trees. Panic surged within him as he scanned the darkness, but his flashlight flickered, struggling against the encroaching shadows. Then, from the depths of the woods, he saw it, a tall, gaunt figure emerging from the mist, its skin pale and stretched tight over its bones. Ethan's breath hitched. He felt an overwhelming wave of terror wash over him. The wraith's eyes glowed with a malevolent hunger, fixing on him as if it could taste his fear. He remembered Mary's warning and forced himself to look away, but the shadows writhed around him, whispering his deepest fears, wrapping him in despair. With every ounce of strength, Ethan turned to run, the forest closing in around him. Branches clawed at his skin, and the ground seemed to shift beneath him. He could hear the wraith's breath behind him, cold and relentless, urging him to succumb to the darkness. He burst through the trees and stumbled toward his truck, fumbling with the keys as he heard the wraith's growl escalate into a terrifying scream. Finally, the engine roared to life and he sped away, leaving the haunted woods behind. The aftermath. Back at the ranger station, Ethan could hardly process what had happened. He reported the encounter, but knew no one would believe him. The darkness of the woods clung to him, a reminder of the terror that lay hidden beneath the surface of nature's beauty. Days turned into weeks, and Ethan tried to shake off the experience. But every night, as the sun dipped below the horizon, he felt the pull of the forest, the shadows whispering his name. Uh, he would never forget the woman in white or the wraith that haunted the woods. Years later, Ethan transferred to a different park, hoping to leave the memories behind. But the darkness of the Forgotten Woods would always linger, a chilling reminder that some legends are born from truth and some shadows never fade. Story number four. 
Nestled deep within the vast expanse of the Smoky Mountains lies a national park renowned for its breathtaking vistas and ancient trees. But beyond its beauty, it harbors secrets known only to those who venture too far into the wilderness. One such secret was about to unfold for Ranger Sarah Mitchell, a seasoned park ranger with a keen sense for danger. Sarah had spent years patrolling the rugged trails of Whispering Pines National Park. Though she loved the solitude of the mountains, she had heard rumors of strange occurrences, disappearing hikers, ghostly whispers in the night, and sightings of a creature known as the Woodwalker. Legends spoke of this elusive cryptid as a guardian of the forest, but also as a predator that claimed those who wandered too far from the trails. One crisp autumn evening, Sarah received a call over her radio. A group of campers had gone missing, last seen near an old logging road that wound through the heart of the park. The sun was setting, casting long shadows through the trees, and she knew time was of the essence. With her flashlight and a sense of determination, Sarah set off into the darkening woods. The air was thick with the scent of damp earth and decaying leaves. As she navigated the winding paths, she felt the weight of the forest pressing in around her. The rustling of leaves and distant hoots of owls were the only sounds accompanying her. But as she drew closer to the logging road, the atmosphere shifted. The silence grew heavier, almost expectant. When Sarah reached the clearing near the road, she spotted signs of a struggle, a broken tent, scattered belongings, and the remnants of a campfire. Her heart sank. She called out for the campers, but only her voice echoed back, swallowed by the trees. Deciding to follow the logging road deeper into the woods, she noticed something strange, a series of large footprints embedded in the soft earth, far too big to belong to any bear. A chill ran down her spine as she recalled the stories of the woodwalker. The footprints seemed to lead off the path deeper into the forest. Cautiously, Sarah followed the tracks, her instincts screaming that something was very wrong. The deeper she went, the more she felt like she was being watched. Shadows danced between the trees, and the occasional rustle sent her heart racing. She flicked on her flashlight, the beam cutting through the darkness, revealing the twisted trunks of ancient trees, their gnarled branches clawing at the sky. As she walked, she started to hear whispers carried by the wind, soft and unintelligible. She paused, straining to listen. The whispers grew louder, forming words that sent shivers down her spine. Leave. Now. Danger. It was as if the forest itself was warning her. Suddenly, she caught a glimpse of movement out of the corner of her eye, a flash of dark fur darting between the trees. Instinctively, she turned, but whatever it was vanished into the shadows. Heart pounding, she quickened her pace, desperation fueling her resolve. She needed to find those campers before it was too late. But the forest had other plans. The trail began to twist and turn unnaturally, as if it were resh reshaping itself. Panic set in as she realized she was lost. The whispers grew more insistent, swirling around her like a sinister breeze. Turn back. Turn back. Just then, her flashlight flickered and died, plunging her into darkness. In the eerie silence that followed, a low growl rumbled through the trees, vibrating in her chest. The sound was unlike anything she had ever heard. Primal and terrifying. Sarah's breath quickened as she fumbled in her pack for extra batteries. The growling intensified, and she could feel a presence stalking her from the shadows. Adrenaline surged through her veins, and she finally managed to replace the batteries, flicking the light back on just in time to see it. The woodwalker stood before her, a massive creature covered in matted fur, with piercing yellow eyes that glowed in the darkness. Its elongated limbs moved with an unnatural grace, and its mouth curled into a snarl, revealing rows of sharp teeth. Time seemed to freeze as they locked eyes, and Sarah's instincts screamed at her to run. Without thinking, she turned and sprinted back the way she came, branches whipping against her arms and legs. She could hear the woodwalker behind her, its growls echoing in the night, each thud of its massive feet sending tremors through the ground. She felt the cold breath of the creature on her neck, and she pushed herself harder, praying to reach the logging road before it was too late. Finally, she burst into the clearing, gasping for breath. The night sky was awash with stars, but the serenity felt deceiving, like a calm before the storm. Just then, she spotted a flickering light in the distance, the camper's lantern still glowing in the darkness. Relief washed over her as she stumbled toward them, the feeling of being hunted fading. As she reached the campsite, 
her heart sank. The area was eerily quiet and the campers were nowhere to be found. Panic surged again, but just as she turned to call out, the woodwalker emerged from the trees, its eyes locked on her once more. Sarah's instincts kicked in and she grabbed the lantern, raising it high. Stay back, she shouted, her voice trembling but defiant. The woodwalker paused, its growl deepening, but the light seemed to momentarily hold it at bay. In a moment of desperation, she recalled the stories, tales of how the woodwalker protected the forest. I'm not here to harm you, she yelled, her heart racing. I'm looking for the campers. I need your help. For a heartbeat, time stood still. The creature studied her, its growling slowly subsiding. Then, as if weighing her words, it turned and retreated back into the shadows, leaving her trembling but alive. Breathless, Sarah called out for the campers once more. This time, she heard a faint reply. Emerging from the trees, the group stumbled into the clearing, shaken but unharmed. They had been lost, disoriented by the dark and the whispers of the forest. Sarah quickly recounted her encounter with the woodwalker, and as they made their way back to safety, she felt a strange sense of gratitude. The creature was no mere monster. It was a guardian of the wilderness, one that had spared her life when it could have easily ended it. As they reached the ranger station, Sarah shared her story with her colleagues, her experience adding to the legends of the park. From that day forward, she patrolled the woods with a new respect for the land and the mysteries it held. The Woodwalker was not just a tale to frighten campers. It was a reminder that some things in the forest are meant to be respected, not feared. And so, the legend of the Woodwalker continued, a chilling yet awe-inspiring tale passed down through the rangers, echoing through the Smoky Mountains, forever intertwined with the deep woods they loved. Story number five. Nestled in the sprawling forests of the Pacific Northwest, Cedarwood National Park was a place of beauty and mystery. Towering trees, vibrant flora, and a multitude of wildlife made it a popular destination for hikers and nature lovers. However, lurking beneath its picturesque facade were dark legends that sent shivers down the spines of those who heard them. Stories of strange creatures and disappearances had circulated for generations, but none more unsettling than that of the creature known as the Forest Wraith. Mike, a seasoned park ranger, had heard the rumors but had always dismissed them as mere folklore. He prided himself on his rationality and his commitment to protecting the park and its visitors. One crisp autumn day, after a particularly busy summer, he received a call from a local resident. They reported strange noises coming from deep within the woods, sounds that resembled anguished cries and guttural growls. Intrigued but skeptical, Mike decided to investigate. As he hiked along the rugged trails, the sun began to dip below the horizon, casting long shadows that danced ominously among the trees. The forest, usually alive with the sounds of chirping birds and rustling leaves, had fallen eerily silent. The only sound that filled the air was the crunch of fallen leaves beneath his boots. Hours passed, and as darkness enveloped the forest, Mike found himself in a clearing. The atmosphere shifted, the air grew colder, and an uneasy feeling settled in his stomach. Suddenly, he heard it, the distant, mournful cry that the resident had described. It was a sound that sent chills down his spine, something primal and unearthly. Compelled by a mix of curiosity and duty, Mike moved toward the sound. With each step, the cries grew louder and more desperate. He pushed through thick underbrush, branches clawing at his uniform as he fought to move forward. The forest seemed to close in around him, shadows twisting and turning, playing tricks on his mind. Then he stumbled upon an old, crumbling stone structure partially obscured by foliage. The architecture was unlike anything he had seen before. Archaic symbols were etched into the stone, hinting at rituals long forgotten. As he approached, the air thickened, the cries growing louder, morphing into what sounded like anguished voices pleading for help. Driven by instinct, Mike entered the structure. Inside, the walls were adorned with eerie carvings depicting twisted faces and grotesque forms. In the center of the room lay an altar, draped with remnants of what appeared to be old offerings, bones, trinkets, and other items long abandoned. He felt a wave of dread wash over him, an overwhelming sensation that something was very wrong. Suddenly, the cries stopped, replaced by an unsettling silence. It was then that he felt it, a presence lurking just beyond his sight. The hairs on the back of his neck stood up and he turned slowly, shining his flashlight into the shadows. What he saw made his heart race. 
A tall, gaunt figure with elongated limbs and sunken, hollow eyes stared back at him, its skin stretched tight over its bones. The creature resembled a human, yet something was deeply wrong. Its movements were unnatural, like a marionette with tangled strings. Mike stumbled backward, fear clawing at his throat. The creature let out a low, inhuman growl, its mouth twisting into a grotesque semblance of a smile. It stepped forward and the ground beneath Mike's feet trembled, sending him crashing to the floor. In a panic, he scrambled to his feet and dashed toward the exit, heart pounding in his chest. As he burst from the structure, he could hear the creature's footsteps behind him, growing louder and closer. It felt like the forest itself was alive, branches reaching out as if to ensnare him. Mike sprinted through the darkness, the cries returning, now echoing around him. Help us! Help us! They pleaded, mingling with the creature's growls. Just when he thought he would be overtaken, he spotted a flicker of light in the distance. It was the campsite where he had parked his truck. With renewed determination, he pushed himself harder, muscles burning as he raced towards the light. As he reached the clearing, Mike could hear the creature behind him, its breath ragged and heavy. He reached his truck, fumbled with his keys, and jumped inside, locking the doors just as the creature lunged at him. Its clawed hands scratched the window, leaving deep marks on the glass. Mike started the engine and sped away, the headlights illuminating the twisted trees. As he drove, he glanced in the rearview mirror and saw the creature standing at the edge of the clearing, its hollow eyes reflecting the light. It let out a bone-chilling wail that echoed through the night, a sound filled with rage and hunger. Back at the ranger station, Mike reported the incident, but his fellow rangers met his story with skepticism. They had heard the legends, but chalked them up to tall tales. Feeling isolated and disbelieved, Mike pored over old park records and discovered that many had gone missing in the area surrounding the old stone structure. He learned that the forest wraith was believed to be a guardian of the forest, a spirit that punished those who disrespected nature. Haunted by the encounter, Mike found it difficult to return to his duties. Each time he ventured into the woods, he felt the weight of unseen eyes watching him, waiting for a moment of weakness. His dreams were plagued by visions of the creature, its hollow eyes filled with an unquenchable hunger. Weeks passed, and Mike decided to return to the clearing one last time. Armed with a camera and a newfound resolve, he wanted to document the stone structure to prove that he wasn't losing his mind. As he approached, the atmosphere shifted once more, the familiar chill creeping into his bones. The cries were faint but unmistakable, rising from the depths of the forest. Standing in front of the altar, he snapped pictures, determined to capture evidence of the supernatural. But as he reviewed the images on his camera, his blood ran cold. In every photograph, the forest wraith appeared, lurking just at the edge of the frame, its gaze locked on him, a reminder that he was never truly alone. When he turned to leave, he felt a rush of wind, and the anguished cries erupted around him once more. Help us! Help us! They grew louder, drowning out his thoughts. Mike fled, the forest closing in behind him, branches snapping like bones. As he reached the edge of the woods, he vowed never to return. But even as he drove away, he could still hear the cries echoing in his mind, a haunting reminder of the darkness that lurked within Cedarwood National Park. He had escaped the forest wraith, but he knew its hunger would never cease, waiting patiently for the next soul to wander too far into the depths of the woods. Story number six. In the vast expanse of Redwood National Park, where towering trees scrape the sky and the underbrush teems with life, the serene beauty of nature belied an unsettling truth. Among the whispers of the wind and the rustle of leaves, park rangers had long told stories of something unnatural lurking in the depths of the woods. It was a place where shadows moved with a mind of their own and where reality sometimes blurred with the unknown. The New Ranger Ranger Sarah had just completed her training and was assigned to the park for the summer. Full of excitement and ambition, she was determined to make a name for herself. However, on her first night shift, she felt the weight of the tales surrounding her. The seasoned rangers, especially a stoic man named Rick, had warned her about the Watcher, a creature said to dwell in the pines, stalking those who ventured too far from the trails. It's just a story to scare off the inexperienced, Sarah thought, shaking off her apprehensions. But as she patrolled the dimly lit trails, she couldn't ignore the sense of being watched. 
The moonlight filtered through the branches, casting long, twisting shadows that played tricks on her mind. An ominous discovery. During her rounds, Sarah stumbled upon an old abandoned campsite. The fire pit was cold, and a tattered tent lay half-hidden under a layer of leaves. Curious, she approached, noticing old gear strewn about, a lantern, a cooking pot, and a journal partially buried in the dirt. As she flipped through the pages, she found entries filled with excitement about exploring the park. However, the tone shifted dramatically as the author wrote about feeling like they were being followed. I can hear it watching me at night, one entry read. It's getting closer. I can feel its breath. The last entry was scrawled frantically. Galag, I'm leaving this place. It's not safe. I don't want to become like them. A chill crept down Sarah's spine. She snapped the journal shut, her heart racing. The warnings echoed in her mind. Maybe Rick was right after all. The first signs. As the weeks went by, Sarah dismissed her fears. However, strange occurrences began to plague her nights. She would hear rustling sounds in the brush, whispering voices carried by the wind, and sometimes she would catch glimpses of something dark and hulking between the trees. One night, while doing her rounds, she noticed that her radio was crackling with static, interrupted by faint, distorted voices. She felt a prickling sensation at the back of her neck, as if something were drawing closer. She turned, scanning the shadows, but there was nothing there. Just the forest, playing tricks on me, she muttered, though her instincts urged her to retreat. The unease settled in her stomach, and she rushed back to the safety of her truck. The encounter. A few nights later, Sarah was stationed at a lookout point when she spotted movement far off in the distance. Through her binoculars, she could see a figure standing at the edge of a clearing. It was tall and unnaturally thin, its limbs long and spindly, silhouetted against the backdrop of the moonlit trees. Her breath caught in her throat as she focused on the figure. It stood perfectly still, its head tilted slightly as if observing her. Sarah felt a surge of panic and quickly radioed Rick, her voice shaking. There's something out here. I think I see the watcher. Stay put, Sarah, Rick instructed, his voice calm yet urgent. Don't approach it. Just keep your eyes on it until I get there. As she watched, the figure slowly turned, its eyes reflecting the moonlight like two cold, unblinking stars. In that moment, Sarah felt an overwhelming sense of dread wash over her. The figure moved with an unnatural grace, gliding silently between the trees, disappearing into the dark. Rick arrived moments later, his flashlight cutting through the night. What did you see? He asked, scanning the area. I saw it. It was right there. Sarah pointed to where the figure had been, but now there was nothing. Only the rustle of leaves and the distant hoot of an owl filled the air. Rick's expression hardened. We need to get you back to the station. It's not safe here. Unraveling the mystery. Back at the ranger station, Sarah couldn't shake the feeling of dread. The journal's entries were played in her mind, each word twisting her stomach. She and Rick spent the next few days researching past incidents in the park. They uncovered stories of missing campers, strange sounds reported by rangers, and sightings of a creature resembling what Sarah had seen. One legend told of a spirit that roamed the woods, a guardian of the forest gone rogue. It was said to protect the land from those who disrespected it, but also to prey on those who wandered too far into its domain. The creature was known as the Watcher, and those who encountered it often vanished without a trace. The Last Stand Determined to confront her fears, Sarah resolved to return to the spot where she had seen the figure. Rick reluctantly agreed to accompany her, though he advised caution. They hiked back to the clearing at dusk, the forest alive with sounds that felt both welcoming and ominous. As night fell, the air grew thick with tension. Sarah's heart raced as they approached the clearing, and she felt the familiar prickling sensation creeping back. They set up a small camp, hoping to draw the watcher out. Hours passed, and just as they began to lose hope, the temperature dropped sharply. The air grew still, and then they heard it. A low, guttural growl that echoed through the trees, sending chills down their spines. The figure emerged from the shadows, larger than before, its limbs stretching unnaturally as it stepped into the moonlight. Its eyes glowed with a menacing light, and it stood before them, towering and silent. Rick shouted, Stay behind me! as he drew his flashlight and aimed it at the creature. The beam illuminated its gaunt face, gathered him out, twisted in an expression that was both sorrowful and terrifying. In that moment, 
Sarah realized. The Watcher was not just a monster. It was a guardian, tormented by its purpose. The legend held truth. It watched over the woods, but it was also a reflection of their fears and the darkness of the human heart. Facing the truth. Summoning her courage, Sarah stepped forward, breaking the silence. We're not here to harm you, she said, her voice steady despite the tremor in her heart. We want to understand. The creature paused, tilting its head as if considering her words. The growl softened to a low hum, and for a moment the air felt charged with an understanding that transcended fear. Rick took a step back, still wary, but Sarah remained rooted in place. She reached into her backpack and pulled out the journal she had found earlier, holding it out to the Watcher. This belonged to someone who was afraid. We can't let fear keep us from respecting this land. The creature seemed to sense her sincerity. Slowly it lowered its gaze, and as it did, the oppressive darkness lifted. The tension in the air dissipated, replaced by a calm stillness. Then, just as suddenly as it had appeared, the Watcher turned and melted back into the shadows, leaving Sarah and Rick alone in the clearing, their breaths heavy with the weight of what had transpired. Aftermath. The following weeks brought a newfound peace to the park. Sarah shared her experience with her fellow rangers, who listened with rapt attention. The stories of the Watcher began to shift from fear to respect, as they learned the importance of understanding the wilderness and the spirits that guarded it. Sarah's encounter became a legend of its own, a tale of courage and empathy. The woods no longer felt oppressive, but rather a sanctuary filled with life and wisdom. Though the Watcher remained an enigma, its presence served as a reminder that true understanding lies in facing our fears and respecting the unseen guardians of the wild. Story number seven. In the heart of the Appalachian Mountains lies Black Hollow, a dense, a dense forest known for its stunning scenery and notorious legends. Many hikers have braved its trails, but few are aware of the shadows that linger beneath the trees, waiting for those who stray too far. Park Ranger Alex Thompson had heard the stories of the Wendigo, a terrifying creature said to stalk the woods, but he always dismissed them as mere folklore, until one fateful night. It was late October, and the leaves were ablaze with hues of orange and red. The park was alive with visitors eager to experience the fall colors. But as night fell, a thick fog rolled in, shrouding the forest in an eerie blanket of gray. Alex was finishing his evening rounds when he received a call over the radio about a group of campers who hadn't returned from their hike. Alex, we need you to check on a group last seen near the old fire tower. His supervisor's voice crackled through the static. They should have been back hours ago. On my way, Alex replied, a knot forming in his stomach. He grabbed his flashlight and set off toward the trailhead, the chill of the night air wrapping around him like a shroud. As he hiked through the dense underbrush, the fog thickened, obscuring his view. The forest felt different quiet and watchful as if the trees were holding their breath. With each step, Alex could sense an unsettling presence lurking just beyond his line of sight. He shook off the feeling, convincing himself it was just his imagination. When he reached the old fire tower, he found it eerily silent. The camper's belongings were scattered around the base, a backpack, a jacket, and a half-eaten granola bar. Alarm bells rang in his head. Hey, is anyone here? He called out his voice echoing in the stillness. No response. Panic began to seep in as he climbed the rickety stairs of the tower, scanning the area for any sign of life. The view from the top offered no solace. The fog obscured everything beyond a few yards. Just as he was about to descend, he heard it. A distant, mournful howl that sent chills racing down his spine. Alex froze, his heart pounding in his chest. The sound was unlike anything he had ever heard raw and filled with a hunger that made his blood run cold. He cautiously descended the stairs, trying to pinpoint the direction of the sound. Guys, if you can hear me, make some noise, he shouted again, anxiety rising in his throat. Then he saw it, a flicker of movement at the edge of the trees. The creature emerged slowly from the fog, its gaunt figure illuminated by the beam of his flashlight. It stood at least seven feet tall, with elongated limbs and skin that appeared stretched tight over its bones. Its eyes glowed faintly, reflecting the light like two hungry coals, and its mouth opened to reveal sharp, jagged teeth. The legend of the Wendigo came flooding back to Alex, an insatiable spirit of gluttony and greed said to consume the flesh of the lost. 
He stepped back, heart racing, as the creature let out another chilling howl, this time much closer. Desperate to escape, Alex turned and ran, sprinting down the trail. The forest came alive with the sound of snapping branches and heavy footfalls behind him. He could hear the Wendigo chasing him, the ground trembling beneath its weight. Stay calm, stay calm, he muttered to himself, but panic clawed at his throat. He darted through the trees, trying to remember the path back to the road, but the fog disoriented him. Each direction looked the same, and the growls behind him grew louder, echoing like thunder. Suddenly, he stumbled upon a clearing and skidded to a halt. He caught his breath and turned, heart pounding. The Wendigo stood at the edge of the trees, watching him with an intensity that made his skin crawl. It was a monstrous vision of despair, its body twisted and elongated with fingers that ended in wicked claws. In that moment of desperation, Alex remembered the emergency flare gun he kept in his pack. He fumbled for it, his hands trembling, and aimed it toward the creature. With a loud bang, the flare shot into the night sky, illuminating the clearing in bright red light. The Wendigo recoiled, its eyes wide with an unsettling intelligence. The flare's bright glow seemed to hold it at bay for a moment, illuminating its ghastly form. It howled again, a sound that reverberated through the trees and began to retreat into the shadows. Seeing his chance, Alex turned and ran once more, following the trail with renewed determination. The fog began to lift slightly, revealing familiar landmarks. As he stumbled toward the main road, he could hear the sound of voices in the distance, other rangers searching for him. Finally, breaking through the tree line, he emerged onto the road, breathless and disoriented. His colleagues rushed to his side, concern etched on their faces. Alex! We thought we lost you, one shouted. The campers! They're still out there! He gasped, looking back into the dark woods. We'll send a team, his supervisor assured him, but Alex knew they needed to hurry. The Wendigo was still hunting, still hungry for its next victim. As they organized a search party, Alex couldn't shake the feeling that something had changed in him. He had faced a creature born from the darkest tales of the forest and lived to tell the tale, but at what cost? He felt a weight settle on his chest, a haunting sense of dread that he couldn't explain. Days turned into weeks, but the campers were never found. Rumors began to circulate and the legend of the Wendigo grew, filling the air with an unshakable fear. Alex continued his patrols, but the woods felt different now more alive, more sinister. One night, while sitting in his cabin, Alex heard the familiar howl of the Wendigo echoing through the trees. It chilled him to the bone, a reminder of what lurked just beyond the safety of the light. Though he had escaped, the creature's presence lingered, a shadow that tainted his nights. As the fog rolled in once again, Alex found himself staring into the woods, haunted by the knowledge that the Wendigo was still out there, waiting for the next lost soul to claim. He could feel its eyes watching him, a predatory gaze that promised he would never truly escape its grasp. From that night on, Alex patrolled the forest with an unshakable sense of foreboding, knowing that the Wendigo was more than just a legend. It was a reminder of the darkness that dwells within the heart of the wilderness. Story number eight. Deep in the forests of North Carolina, there lies a vast wilderness known as Black Hollow National Park. The towering pines and dense underbrush create a labyrinthine maze that many hikers have gotten lost in over the years. It was a place of untamed beauty, but also one of foreboding legends. Park ranger Emily was well aware of these tales, especially the one about the Shadow Man, a cryptid said to roam the woods at night, preying on unsuspecting visitors. Emily had been a ranger for over eight years and had encountered her fair share of strange happenings, but she prided herself on being a pragmatic person. She preferred to focus on her duties, ensuring the safety of the park and educating visitors about the importance of conservation. Yet the tales of the shadow man were whispered around campfires, chilling the bones of even the most seasoned locals. One late afternoon, as the sun dipped low in the sky, Emily received a call from the main office. A family of four had gone missing. They had set out on a day hike, but never returned. A search party was already being organized, and Emily was tasked with leading the effort. Equipped with her flashlight and a radio, she ventured into the woods, her heart heavy with worry. As night descended, the forest transformed, shadows stretching and warping in the dimming light. 
The chirping of crickets and rustling of leaves became an unsettling symphony, echoing through the trees. Emily called out the names of the missing family, her voice ringing out, but only silence answered. After several hours of searching, Emily came across a peculiar clearing. In the center stood an ancient tree, its gnarled branches twisted like the fingers of a long-dead giant. The ground was disturbed, as if something had recently dug at its roots. A deep sense of unease settled over her. Suddenly, she felt a chill, as if the temperature had dropped significantly. Ignoring her instincts, she moved closer to the tree. That's when she saw it, a strange symbol carved into the bark. It looked like an intricate spiral intertwined with jagged lines. Her heart raced. She had seen the symbol in old park records associated with local legends about the Shadow Man. According to folklore, the creature was said to be a guardian of the forest, a dark spirit that lured people in, trapping them in a never-ending nightmare. As she stepped back, a rustling noise echoed from behind the tree. Emily turned, flashlight flickering in the growing darkness. She caught a glimpse of a figure darting between the trees. Her pulse quickened. Was it the missing family? Hello? She called, fear clawing at her throat. Is anyone there? But the only response was the distant sound of leaves crunching, growing fainter. Emily felt a wave of dread wash over her. She glanced at the tree one last time and decided to follow the sounds, hoping against hope that she would find the family. As she moved deeper into the woods, the shadows grew thicker and the forest closed in around her. The air became heavy with tension and her flashlight flickered ominously. She paused, listening closely, but all she could hear was the sound of her own heartbeat echoing in her ears. Suddenly, she spotted something on the ground. Footprints. They were large and deep, unlike any animal she had encountered in the park. Following them, Emily's instincts screamed at her to turn back. But she pushed onward, desperate to find the missing family. After what felt like an eternity of weaving through the trees, she stumbled upon an abandoned campsite. The tent was torn and tattered, and the campfire was cold and blackened, as if it had been doused weeks ago. Her heart sank. The signs of struggle were evident. A backpack lay discarded, and there were scuff marks in the dirt leading away from the site. Panic surged through her. They were here, she thought. Just then, the air shifted, and a low growl reverberated through the trees. Emily froze, her breath hitching in her throat. She turned slowly, shining her flashlight into the surrounding darkness, but all she could see were shadows moving just beyond the reach of the light. Then, out of the corner of her eye, she caught sight of it. The Shadow Man. It stood just at the edge of the clearing, its figure tall and imposing, shrouded in darkness. Its eyes glowed like embers, piercing through the night, and it seemed to absorb the light around it, becoming a living shadow. Emily's heart raced as she took a step back, but the creature did not advance. Instead, it watched her, its gaze cold and unyielding. Leave this place, a voice hissed from the darkness, echoing like a thousand whispers. It wasn't just a sound, it was a feeling, a rush of dread that filled the air. Emily's instincts kicked in, and she turned to run, heart pounding as the growl of the creature followed her through the trees. Branches whipped at her face, and the ground beneath her feet felt uneven as she sprinted away from the campsite. The shadows danced around her, but she didn't dare look back. The growl morphed into a chilling laughter, resonating through the forest, taunting her as she ran. Just when she thought she would be overtaken, she spotted a faint light ahead. It was the park's visitor center. With a final burst of energy, she dashed toward it, pushing through the door and slamming it shut behind her. She leaned against the door, gasping for breath, her mind racing. But the respite was short-lived. Outside, she could hear the creature's growls growing louder, mixed with the anguished cries of the missing family. Help us! Help us! They pleaded, their voices entwined with the shadows. It felt as though the forest itself was trying to drag her back into its depths. Emily knew she couldn't stay there. She grabbed the radio and called for backup, her voice shaky but determined. I need help. There's something in the woods. Something dangerous. I think the missing family... They're in danger. As she waited, she glanced out the window. The forest was silent, but she could see the outline of the shadow man lingering just beyond the tree line, its glowing eyes fixed on her. Time felt frozen as she stared back, a battle of wills between ranger and creature. 
When her fellow rangers arrived, they found Emily shaken but resolute. They formed a search party and returned to the campsite. Armed with flashlights and walkie-talkies, they scoured the area but found no sign of the family. The only evidence of their presence was the cold campfire and the heavy silence that hung in the air. Days turned into weeks, and despite extensive searches, the missing family was never found. The townsfolk whispered of Emily's encounter with the Shadow Man, turning it into another haunting legend of Black Hollow National Park. Though she continued her duties as a park ranger, Emily was never able to shake the feeling of being watched. Every time she entered the woods, she could sense the presence of the Shadow Man lurking just out of sight. It was as a constant reminder of the darkness that lay beneath the park's surface, a shadowy guardian of secrets best undisturbed. Story number nine. Deep within the Appalachian Mountains, there lies a secluded area known as Cedar Grove, a picturesque landscape of towering trees and vibrant foliage. To the casual observer, it seems a peaceful sanctuary, but locals whisper tales of strange occurrences, unexplained phenomena, and the ominous history that lingers in the air. Park rangers, especially those who have worked the night shifts, know better than to underestimate the tales woven into the fabric of the woods. The Haunted History Ranger Jack had spent five years in Cedar Grove and he had heard all the stories, the ghost of a young girl who disappeared decades ago, the haunting calls echoing through the night, and the eerie shadows that seem to move independently among the trees. Most dismiss these stories as folklore, but Jack couldn't shake the feeling that there was something more profound in the silence of the woods. One autumn evening, as the sun dipped behind the horizon, Jack prepared for his shift. The air was crisp, and the scent of cedar filled his lungs. He headed out on patrol, determined to keep an eye on the park's visitors and the trails that led deeper into the woods. As he drove along the narrow paths, the forest closed in around him, and the shadows lengthened ominously. An uneasy patrol. While checking in with the main ranger station, Jack received a call about a group of campers who hadn't returned from their hike. Just a little late, he thought, but the uneasy feeling in his gut warned him otherwise. He set off towards the last known location of the group, an isolated area known as Whispering Pines. As he parked his truck, and began walking along the trail, the atmosphere shifted. The whispering of the leaves overhead sounded almost like voices, and an unnatural chill settled in the air. The deeper he went, the more isolated he felt. He called out, Hello, is anyone there? But only silence greeted him in return. After several minutes, he stumbled upon the camper's abandoned gear, a scattered assortment of backpacks, sleeping bags, and a lantern still flickering faintly. Panic surged through him as he quickly radioed for backup. I found their campsite, but there's no sign of them. We need to search the area. The search begins. As Jack waited for his fellow rangers to arrive, he decided to look around the nearby area. The forest felt alive and the shadows danced like phantoms. He followed a faint trail that led deeper into the woods, convinced that the campers had taken a wrong turn. As he walked, the sunlight dimmed and he noticed something strange. Small, delicate dolls hung from the branches of the trees. They were crudely made with wild hair and button eyes, each one painted in grotesque expressions of fear. Jack's heart raced. He felt a cold breeze brush past him, sending shivers down his spine. Suddenly, he heard a soft giggle, a sound so innocent yet chilling in the context of the woods. Jack froze, straining to hear. Is someone there? He called out, hoping for a reply. The giggling stopped, replaced by a haunting whisper that seemed to drift through the trees. Help us. Find us. Jack's blood ran cold. What the hell? He muttered under his breath. The voice was distant yet palpable, echoing in the quiet forest. Driven by a mix of fear and determination, he pushed deeper into the woods, convinced the campers were in trouble. The heart of darkness. As he navigated the dense underbrush, the atmosphere grew heavy. The sunlight faded and an unnatural fog rolled in, obscuring his vision. The whispering grew louder, almost insistent, urging him to follow. Help us, help us. Jack stumbled into a small clearing where the air felt charged, thick with a palpable sense of dread. In the center stood an old, gnarled tree, its bark twisted and covered in moss. Surrounding it were the campers, their faces pale and eyes wide with fear. They stood frozen as if entranced by the tree. Jack, one of the campers, a young woman named Lisa, called out, her voice strained. We don't know what happened. We just, we just came here to rest and then everything went dark. 
Before he could respond, the ground shook and the air shimmered. The dolls he had seen earlier began to sway, their eyes glinting in the low light, and the whispering crescendoed into a deafening cacophony. Jack realized that the dolls were part of something far darker than he could have imagined. Leave now, he shouted, stepping closer to the campers. We need to get out of here. But as he reached for Lisa, an unseen force pushed him back. The whispering intensified, swirling around him like a storm. Jack fought against it, desperate to break through the chaos. The haunting revelation. In that moment, a figure materialized from the shadows, a translucent apparition of a girl, no older than 12, with sorrowful eyes. She gazed at Jack, her voice a haunting echo. You shouldn't have come here. This is our home now. You can't leave. Jack's heart raced as he realized the truth. The girl was the spirit of the child who had vanished long ago, and the campers were trapped in a timeless loop, ensnared by the darkness that lingered in Cedar Grove. We're not here to hurt you. We want to help, he pleaded. Help us? The girl's voice trembled. No one can help us. We are lost, just like them. Her fingers pointed to the dolls, each one representing a lost soul, captured in the forest's dark grip. The air turned icy as Jack felt the weight of despair crash over him. The trees around him seemed to close in, their branches clawing at his skin. The whispers transformed into wails, and the spirit's expression morphed into one of anguish. Leave now, she begged, before you become one of us. With sheer determination, Jack turned to the campers, who stood frozen in fear. We need to break the spell. Hold on to me, he shouted, forcing them to focus on him. Together, they joined hands, and Jack summoned all his strength to pull them back toward the trail. As they moved, the whispers grew more frantic, as if the forest was desperately trying to keep them within its grasp. The gnarled tree shook, its roots writhing like serpents, but they pressed on, drawing closer to the edge of the clearing. Escape and Aftermath Finally, they burst through the trees, tumbling onto the main path, gasping for breath. The darkness receded, and the air felt lighter. They had escaped, but Jack could still feel the weight of the forest's sorrow pressing against him. Once they reached the ranger station, Jack contacted his fellow rangers, explaining what had happened. As they organized a search and rescue for the campers, Jack couldn't shake the image of the girl from his mind. Days later, after the campers were safely returned to their families, Jack returned to Cedar Grove. He stood at the edge of the clearing, staring at the gnarled tree. The dolls had vanished, but the echoes of the lost souls lingered in the air. In the months that followed, Jack dedicated himself to understanding the spirits of Cedar Grove. He conducted research, collected stories from locals, and began to advocate for the preservation of the site, recognizing that some places held secrets meant to be respected not exploited. The legend of Cedar Grove continued to grow, but Jack made sure it was one of understanding and caution. He never forgot the young girl or the souls trapped in the woods knowing that their whispers would always echo in the pines, waiting for someone to listen. Story number 10. In the heart of the dense forests of Northern California lies Redwood Grove National Park, a sanctuary famous for its towering trees and lush undergrowth. But amidst the beauty lurks an ancient, unsettling presence that park ranger Lisa Rodriguez had learned to respect. Stories of a creature known as the Tall Man. This legend whispered of a figure that roamed the woods, tall and shadowy, with an unsettling ability to blend seamlessly into the trees. Lisa had spent years working the trails of Redwood Grove, and while she loved the solitude and serenity of the park, the tales of the Tall Man always hung in the air like fog. Most of her colleagues brushed them off as old myths meant to scare tourists, but Lisa couldn't shake the feeling that there might be more to the story. One evening in late September, Lisa was tasked with patrolling a remote section of the park known as Devil's Hollow, an area notorious for strange occurrences. The sun dipped behind the towering redwoods, casting long shadows that danced ominously on the ground. As she walked the narrow trail, the usual sounds of the forest faded, leaving an eerie silence that settled around her like a heavy blanket. The wind picked up, rustling the leaves overhead, and Lisa felt a chill creep up her spine. As she continued her patrol, she noticed something strange. A series of large footprints leading off the main trail, deeper into the underbrush. They were far too large to belong to a bear, and her heart raced at the thought of the tall man. She hesitated, but decided to follow the tracks, 
convinced they could lead her to something significant. With each step deeper into the woods, the air grew heavier, thick with the scent of damp earth and decay. The silence was palpable, the only sound being her heartbeat echoing in her ears. The trail became less distinct, the trees closing in around her as if trying to swallow her whole. Lisa's flashlight flickered ominously, casting long shadows that seemed to reach out and grasp at her. Suddenly, she heard a sound, a soft whisper carried on the wind, but when she turned, there was nothing there. It was as if the forest itself was warning her to turn back. But she pressed on, driven by an unexplainable urge to uncover the truth. After what felt like hours, Lisa stumbled into a small clearing. The moonlight pierced through the treetops, illuminating a stone circle at the center. A chill ran down her spine as she recognized it from the stories, an ancient site said to be a gathering place for something dark and primal. Just then, a low growl rumbled from the shadows, and Lisa felt a surge of adrenaline. She raised her flashlight, scanning the darkness, but the beam only caught glimpses of movement, something shifting just beyond her vision. Panic set in as she realized she wasn't alone. Without warning, the tall man emerged from the trees, its figure towering above her, skin pale as moonlight, with elongated limbs and hollow eyes that seemed to absorb the darkness around it. It stood motionless, studying her with a chilling intensity. Lisa's breath quickened, fear clawing at her throat. She turned to run, but the creature's growl echoed in the clearing, paralyzing her with terror. It stepped forward and she could see its mouth stretched into a grotesque smile, revealing rows of jagged teeth. Instinct kicked in and she bolted through the trees, branches snapping against her skin as she sprinted away from the clearing. The tall man was close behind, its breath heavy and rancid, echoing through the silence of the forest. Every time she glanced back, it seemed to be closer, its gaunt figure melding with the shadows around her. Lisa's mind raced as she navigated the treacherous underbrush. She could hear the creature's growls growing louder, a sinister chorus that filled the night air. I need to make it back to the trail, she thought desperately. But the forest seemed to conspire against her, twisting and turning in ways that felt almost intentional. Just as she was beginning to lose hope, she burst back onto the main trail, gasping for breath. The moonlight flooded the area and she could see the familiar landmarks. She glanced back, heart pounding, but the tall man had vanished into the shadows, leaving only an unsettling silence in its wake. Lisa ran toward her truck, her heart racing and palms sweating. She fumbled with her keys, desperate to lock the doors behind her. Once inside, she slammed the door shut and locked it, the safety of metal a small comfort in the depths of the forest. Her hands trembled as she grabbed the radio. This is Ranger Lisa Rodriguez. I need backup at Devil's Hollow. There's something out here. Her voice wavered, the fear still raw in her throat. As she waited for help, she couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. The trees loomed around her, and she could almost hear the whispers again, the forest taunting her. Then, just as she thought she might be safe, a sharp knock sounded on her window. Lisa jumped, nearly dropping her flashlight, but it was just a fellow ranger, a look of concern on his face. Are you okay? He asked, peering into the truck. I saw it! The tall man! She gasped, recounting her harrowing experience but the ranger's expression shifted to one of skepticism. Come on, Lisa, it's just a story. Just a story, she exclaimed, shaking with adrenaline. I saw it, it was right there. Before he could respond, the radio crackled to life. Ranger Rodriguez, we've got reports of missing campers in the area. We need to conduct a search. Lisa's heart sank. The tall man wasn't just a story, it was a predator stalking the woods, and now it was after more than just her. As the search party gathered, she felt the weight of dread settle over her. They ventured back into the darkness, armed with flashlights and a sense of duty, that, but Lisa couldn't shake the feeling that they were walking into a trap. As they fanned out in search of the missing campers, the shadows seemed to close in around them. Lisa's flashlight flickered and died, plunging her into darkness. Panic surged again, but she forced herself to stay calm, moving quietly through the trees. Then from behind her, she heard it the familiar low growl. Heart pounding, she turned to see the tall man standing just beyond the light of her colleagues. Flashlights, its hollow eyes fixed on her, and the whispers began again, swirling around her like a haunting melody. Join us, join us. 
The other rangers turned at the sound, but by the time they shone their lights in the direction of the growl, it was gone, vanished into the darkness. The forest fell silent again, but the tension remained, heavy and suffocating. The search for the campers continued into the night, but as the hours passed, they found no trace. Eventually, the ranger team regrouped at the trailhead, exhausted and unnerved. As they discussed their next steps, Lisa glanced back toward the trees, knowing in her gut that the tall man was still out there, watching, waiting. In the weeks that followed, the stories of the tall man intensified and sightings began to flood in from visitors. Some reported feeling watched, while others claimed to have seen a tall, shadowy figure lurking at the edge of the trees. Despite the growing fears, Lisa could never shake the dread that settled in her bones. She had encountered something that lived in the very fabric of the forest, a creature that was more than just legend. Even as she continued her patrols, she found herself glancing over her shoulder, wondering if the tall man would return. The woods felt different now, an ancient power stirring just beneath the surface. And though she vowed to protect the park and its visitors, she could feel the weight of the shadows closing in, a chilling reminder that some legends are born from truths best left undisturbed.